Welcome to the Best Hour of Their Day podcast with your hosts, Jason Fernandez and me, Jason Ackerman. With more than 20 years in the business, as both coaches and affiliate owners, our passion is to help create world-class affiliates and coaches by building better boxes. boxes. Welcome to the best hour of your day. Welcome back to the podcast. Nick, it's been like one week I know. since I've seen you. It, Nick is as tall as you might think he is, everybody. <laughs> I got a bunch of comments this weekend. Everybody, uh, I think they were expecting me to be a lot shorter than I am. Uh, I, I told you I had like this weird fear that you were going to be short. And I saw you and I was like, that's exactly how tall I thought you were going to be. <laughs> um, no, but Nick uh, Nick was at our mastermind in Nashville. It was fantastic. He gave a killer talk. And um, I'll tell you what was rewarding for me, Nick. And I think I told you this. It was rewarding for me to see how excited people were to see you and meet you in person. And it just solidified like how important this whole topic is that we deal with because it makes such a big impact on people. So yeah. right, what was your, how did, how was your, how was your weekend? dude? How was it for you? Oh, it was awesome. I mean, it was super fun. I, it was, uh, I, look, you know, uh, personally it was nerve wracking a little bit and I shared a little bit of that. I was, it was nervous uh, for the speaking and just, you know, wanting to make a good impression and do well and all that stuff. But I will say it was really cool because once I got up there and like started talking and then I started looking out and I'm like, Oh, I know you. Oh, yeah. I know you and I know you. And yeah. like, and I, and I'm like, then it felt like I was at home, you know, yeah. cause I was like, nah, I knew so many people um, right. from getting to hang out with them on zoom over the last year. Um, yeah, it was awesome. It was really fun. I, I mean, I learned a ton just like, I mean, I see a ton of box budgets, right? So I mm -hmm. see a lot of differences and nuances and stuff, but, there's not really anything that will replace being in person for a couple of days and just oh, listening sure. and being around. And so it was really fun for me to hear all the different sort of nuances of like just different locations and different like gym sizes and, and, and physical sizes and member sizes and different, you know, issues people are facing. I don't know. It was fun. It was, I yeah. got to just kind of, I mean, I got to talk a lot and help a lot, but I was mostly felt like I was just a fly on the wall and just getting yeah. to listen in and like hear what all people are working on and doing. That's super cool. Yeah. It's a cool place to be a fly on the wall. Um, yeah, it was awesome, dude. We were walking in there and I was like, dude, look, look at all this. Like there was 200 something, a little bit over 200 people there at the mastermind. It was just, it was awesome. Yeah. So, um, and one of the topics that came up where we were there is, yo, I want to quit my job. How do I? <laughs> How do I do this thing full time? Yeah, uh, we were just talking. We were just jamming a little bit before between a couple of different scenarios. But you, you know, for most people, you know, this is that that is the dream. They're like, I have this job that I'm doing because it puts food on the table, but I really want to go do this other thing. How do I start to map out what making the leap looks like? And uh, it's not necessarily a, a direct line or, or, or one for one. The gym makes this much money. And this is what my other job makes. Um, there's a lot of considerations to make. So if you are listening to this and you are somebody who is considering quitting your job to go into the gym full time or even open a gym, don't do it just yet. Finish the podcast first. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to lay out um, some very specific details and roadmaps on how to go about doing that so because we've done this i don't even know how many times at this point but i know there was like half a dozen people after the mastermind who were like yeah like let's do this let's make it happen so um where where does where do we start yeah um okay so first off just real quick my mic sounds better right yes it does yeah you sound good. Good. okay yeah. um where do we start the first step really is making sure that you deeply understand your personal numbers. And so this is a step that um, a lot of people skip over because they think they know their personal numbers. Like, oh, well, I make this and you know, my spouse makes this, or I make this and I'm single, so that's my number. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like, there's so much more to understanding your numbers um, than just knowing what you currently make from your day job. And so when I say your personal numbers, I want to dig into what I mean by that. Specifically, the number I care about is how much money per month needs to hit your bank account after taxes. So 
if you account for all of your personal stuff, that's all of your bills, and then all of your discretionary stuff, groceries, gas, dining out, clothing, and then all of the stuff that like typically screws up your personal budget that you forget about, like birthdays and Christmas and auto maintenance and home maintenance and you know your kids' summer camp for whatever, those types of things, we have to know what those are too. And I'll, I'll, I'll walk through a template here in a second. But like okay. the number that I care about is I need to know how much money per month needs to come into your personal checking account in total. And so if you're single, just for you, if you're married, that means total from both spouses, right? So both spouses, how much needs to hit the bank account. Mm -hmm. um, that's the number that I care about. And it's important to understand that number because one of the biggest ways that you can make making this leap easier is by needing less than you currently earn, right? <laughs> like right. I know that sounds I know that sounds really like shocker shocking. Uh -huh. <laughs> but but like I, I personally have made this leap a number of times. Um I left my engineering job to do freelance marketing. And then in 2020, I quit freelance marketing. I dropped all of my freelance clients to do money coaching full time. And so there were a couple of times, and then my wife quit her job in there as well. And so a couple of times we've we've given up an income to make the leap into the next mm -hmm. thing. And and in every one of those cases, we needed less than we were making from the thing that we were giving up. Got and it. so I didn't need to just replace that income. I I I didn't need to replace the whole thing. I just needed to replace enough of it to make my living. Does that make sense? Oh uh, yeah, it makes perfect sense because it, because it's. In, in a lot of instances, I won't say most, but in a lot of instances, it wouldn't be weird if you had, if your income dropped a little bit, right? You're totally. taking a risk, right? Yep. Some of it is unknown and all those other things. And uh, so it's it's worth accounting for that. So um, know that. And, um, and it is worth noting the, so obviously we work with affiliates. So that's, mm -hmm. we start in the gym. Yes. And I will tell you, having done both, I, it is, I don't know what your opinion here is, Nick, but I actually... But it was easier to budget for the gym. It is okay than it was 100%. personally. Uh, for for both from a mechanic standpoint, there's just less transactions, um, all that kind of stuff. But there's obviously and there's there's obviously the you're less emotional about the gym. The gym once you get into budgeting for the gym, it becomes very objective. There's a there's an outcome there, and this is you know the, there's a very clear vision there, which is what you talked about at the at the mastermind with uh with creating that vision for yourself personally so what you're saying is you must have both budgets intact to do this yes. effectively which is a gym budget and a personal budget yes 100 100 percent. because um the personal stuff is like so variable right the gym has some variability absolutely but the personal stuff especially if you've got like kids and you know you got a family mm -hmm. it's insanely insanely variable. So yeah, let me, let me share my screen. So again, okay. if you're listening to this on the podcast, you might want to hop over to YouTube, but I'll talk through it. But okay. what you are looking at is, and don't pay too much attention to any of the numbers right here. This is just a, a fake budget that I've got mm -hmm. that I, I use sometimes. But what I want people to hone in on is the structure. Okay. And so these are just ways for you to make sure that you're capturing everything. And so I would encourage you to set up your budget and then I'm going to give you a number of categories that you should think through. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of list them off rapid fire, but okay. it's because I want you to make sure you've thought of anything. Uh, so first off is debt payments, right? And so if you've got monthly debts, we need to list those out. We need to know what those are. Car loans, student loans, credit card payments that you are not actively charging to, right? So just old credit card debt that you're working on paying down. Personal loans, HELOCs, mortgages. If you got loans, we got to list those out. We got to get them. We got to understand what the minimum payments are every month. From there, any other fixed bills. So this is all of your insurances, pet insurance, health insurance, life insurance, liability insurance, right? This is all of your utilities, your internet, all of your entertainment subscriptions, your Netflix, your Spotify, your Hulu's. This is also uh, phone bills. And then the other items here, bills wise, would be like gym memberships. But mm. obviously, if you're an affiliate owner, you're probably not got your own gym membership. But uh, any sort of bill, those are the things that are coming in here. Now, right. next grouping. This is what I call fund spending. So this is 
eating out, but it's also what my wife and I use is a individual fund spending money. And so every single month we both get the same amount of money to just kind of blow on whatever we want for okay. fun. And so this covers things that are outside of like uh, necessary clothing or things like that. Like this right. is if I just wanted to buy clothes for myself or if I wanted to go out and, uh, you know, grab a drink with a friend or whatever that comes from my fun spending money. Entertainment. Yeah. This is uh, also sometimes I'll call it family fun. So, you know, taking the yep. kids out to movies, bowling, whatever. Yep. All right. Monthly living. So this is what most people consider like just kind of my normal run of the mill day to day stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is groceries. This is gas. This is essential clothing, right? Socks, shoes, underwear. Um, and what you're doing, some people are going, well, I don't buy that every month. So when I say monthly number, what I'm asking people to do is like clothing. I'm going, well, how much might you spend over the course of a year? Right. And then divide that by 12. And that's your monthly number. And so we're right. trying to come up with monthly numbers for all of these. And so like pet expenses can get really expensive because you've got monthly food, but then like if you've got, you know, that dogs that has to get groomed, yeah. you know, yeah. nails, toys, all kinds of stuff, right? Um, other items in the monthlies are like cosmetics, depending on where you buy them. If you buy them from like specialty cosmetic stores, um, I'll break them out separately. But if you get them at the same place, you get your groceries then just put them there, right? Like if you go to Sam's Club oh, and you yeah. get everything there, just put it right, in there. Right, right. Um, haircuts, personal care, gifts. This is a big one that will screw people up. So we don't think about it that often. Um, some of the biggest ones are, think about what season of life you're in. So are you in a season of life where like everybody's getting married and you're getting mm -hmm. invited to like tons of weddings? Are you in a season of life where you're getting invited to tons of baby showers? Are you in a season of life where everybody's graduating and you're getting invited to all your friends, kids, graduations. Are you, you know, do you have two five-year-old kids and they get invited to kindergarten with the whole class's birthdays. And so they go to friggin' 10 birthdays a year. Right. Right. Think about those things again, how much might you spend a year divide by 12 and then charitable giving tithing, that kind of thing. And then typically I'll throw a little bit for unexpected miscellaneous. All right. Kids sounds pretty straightforward. As kids are older, so like think 10 plus, I'm going to break out a category per kid, especially as they start doing a lot of activities and stuff. Yep. I like to be able to see that separately. Um, and then the other items here would be sometimes you might want to dedicate a category for any large expenses. So like if you have a kid who does, um, you know, a summer camp or summer sport or something like that, you'll want to, again, take that amount and annualize it and set it aside. Hey, you want to hear a cool story? I'm going to tell you, I just got a text just now. Please. This is real time, everybody. Real I, got time. A text. I won't say who it's from, but it says, I know it's not the end of the month, but for the first time ever, I have a leftover ready to assign hey. after clearing all the red and yellows in YNAB. That's huge. Yeah. That's a huge one. Yeah. By the way, I get these texts like all day, every day. As a matter of fact, everybody, everybody stop texting me these things. I don't want to hear about your, <laughs> I don't want to hear about your sex, your success and happiness. No, but it's serious. Like this is like, this literally just came through as you're talking about this. And I'm like, this is the point. And, That's and, so cool. and, uh, and it's cool to people to see people go through the little sticking points in there and then finally get over the hump. And I'm like, yes, I'm like, That's, That's what that person yes. needed to continue pushing through and executing all of this. So, um, that's cool. Sorry. Back no, you're track. good. You're good. It's, uh, it's also really fun too. What one other quick aside, like, uh, I'll share this. I don't think you would care. Um, if he does, then we'll edit it out. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> too bad. <laughs> uh, too bad. Um, it's really fun. Like what I want people to to know when they listen to us is like, and this is what I hope people also heard at the mastermind is like, we are not asking you to do all this budgeting stuff, and and it's not something we don't do. Like every single person, you, Ackerman, oh, yeah. Marcus, and so it's like we were in the car. I was in the car with Marcus last weekend, um, and. Uh, we were in the car and uh, his wife uh, called him and was like, basically some new like summer camp yeah. thing came up for uh, their kid. Yeah. And uh, she was like, Hey, do we, do you think we can work this into the budget? Do you think we can like make this happen? And you know, and so they talked about yeah. it and they're going to figure it out. But like the point is like, we're all doing that. 
It's yeah. an ongoing, ever changing process. And like, because money is the lifeblood of how this stuff runs. And so we right. have to have these conversations about it. And it was just funny because we were in the car together and she called yeah. him and asked that. It was awesome. He's like, um, Let me check with Nick. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Let me ask Nick real quick. Okay. <laughs> so that's kids. Okay. Long term. Again, this is the other grouping that like really messes people up. This is one where they they forget. Oh crap! Yeah, I do have that annual life insurance payment we signed mm -hmm. up for. Oh man, yeah, that annual Amazon Prime or, or YNAB in this case. And so these are other non monthly items that are going to come out that typically throw you off. Short term savings. So this is like saving for not you know a rainy day. This is like mm -hmm. I'm saving for a vacation. Uh, oh yeah, every year for Thanksgiving we travel and we go visit you know so and so, and it's right. like cool. Well. We need to make that in here. So you'll see saving for Thanksgiving. I'm taking $800 a year for getting the hotel for a couple of days right. for family Thanksgiving and dividing it so that I'm working an $80 a month into right. the budget. Right. And so essentially that's what, what we're trying to do with all this. And so uh, just wrapping up here, Christmas, auto maintenance, medical, home maintenance, property taxes, investment contributions. These are the categories. So if you are listening or you are watching, I want you to know if you're going to go set up a personal budget, you should basically use this list as a, do I have this? If not, great, mark it off. But if you do have this in your life, we need to figure out what is the average monthly amount yeah. that I should be setting aside for this. Yep. Once you've done that, You'll notice nowhere in here am I talking about taxes or top level income. This is how much money needs to personally come into the bank account. And so if I were using this as our working example, the total for this budget is $7,206 a month. Mm -hmm. And so let's use easy math and let's say that I knew, okay, well, that means that we need $7,206 a month to personally hit the bank account. And if we're married, let's say that our spouse brings in $2,200 a month, whatever they do. Great. That means that if I want to quit my job, the gym needs to bring in five, it needs to pay me $5,000 mm -hmm. a month. Mm -hmm. And once the gym can successfully send me $5,000 a month after taxes, then I know that I can make that leap. And yeah. if that feels unreasonable, well then... I can go through here and I can start slicing away, right? Yeah. And I can start going, all right, well, what can I do to get that number down so that maybe I can get to where the gym only needs to pay me $4,500 a month or mm -hmm. whatever it is. Yeah. And that, that's the beauty of this. And we've talked about this before, but uh, it, it makes for very quick solve, uh, problem solving, which is like, hey, we're going to do this. I'm like, where's it going to come from? Mm -hmm. You know, um, like uh, my wife was asking me the other day, she's like, hey, uh, what are we going to do for, uh, for Chappie's birthday party? I was like, well, we hadn't budgeted. We went over on vacation last month. And she's like, well, we're not spending that this month. So you can move that over. And I was like, okay, perfect. Well, then we don't have to actually adjust the number. If we're not going to spend it from over there, well, then just move it over and we're good. No, no adjustment actually needed uh, in there. And we can still do uh, the birthday party. So um, those are like examples of that. Totally. Totally. That's the first thing that I wanted to say is mm -hmm. if you're like, all right, I want to quit my job. First step is I need to know how much money needs to personally hit your bank account. Let's use our easy math example, uh, five grand. And I'm going to take a few notes here mm -hmm. and I'll share my screen here again in a second. But um, did you have anything on on that firm before I kind of move on to the next thing? No, I mean, the um, the, the big ones I think you you put in there, but may have gotten uh, lost in that list was, you know, if your employer is paying for your health insurance and you're going to have to go pay for that out of pocket, you're going to now have to account for that. And depending on where you're at and how old you are and all that other kind of stuff like that can be a pretty hefty bill. Yes. Um, because it's, uh, for a lot of people, that's uh, like their employer might cover all of that. And that's not something that you that comes in and then gets paid out each month, even though your employer would uh, could pay for that. So just factoring in all of the nuance, like um, an example would be uh, when people leave the military, when they're looking for jobs, they're like, oh, I need to make this much money. And this is, and this is how much I get. One of the things a lot of people forget is there are non-taxable pays that you will get in many instances in the military. So hmm. housing allowance is one uh -huh. that is a non-taxable pay, depending on where you live, you could be looking at thousands of dollars in housing allowance a month, like, you know, two to $3,000 a month, if not more. 
that you get that is not technically pay. So what yeah. you're highlighting there is like that comes in there. And if you don't know that and you're just like, oh, I know I get paid this month. And I'm like, you actually get paid significantly more than that, than that. Yeah. when you when you factor in the allowances. So you need to factor that, those things in when you make that leap because you might be basing it off of, well, well I make uh, $75,000 a month when you actually, your income, including allowances is like 110. Yeah. Factoring all those other things in. That's interesting. That's interesting. So yeah, that's a perfect example. So that's what I was going to say is um, we got to add in the health insurance and then we got to add in anything else that our employer might be covering. And so like mm -hmm. if you're in the military, those housing allowances are going to be a big one. Um, but I mean, there are other things like, you know, this is not as common anymore, but like, you know, my father-in-law had a company car and like right. when he retired, the car went away. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh crap! I gotta get a car pay. I gotta go park car payment. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, so it's, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff like that that all of a sudden, if you, it's easy to forget mm -hmm. when you kind of get used to it. Yeah. Um, cool. So we'll add that in. All right. So then the next the next question, right, is like, all right, well, let's use our easy math example of five k a month. I need five k a month from the gym to pay me. The next step is we got to go, all right, well, what can the gym pay me, right? How how do I figure out, can the gym afford to pay me that amount of money? Um, and what I put in the notes as we prep for this was um, the numbers that I'm most concerned with over here are like, what are the operating expenses of the gym? Mm -hmm. Obviously, I need to know my revenue. What's the revenue of the gym? What's the operating expenses of the gym? And so that tells me my gross profit, right? Right. And so if I'm Jim's making 20 K a month in revenue and, uh, my operating expenses are 15,000 a month, well then my gross profits five mm -hmm. on the surface. That sounds pretty good. Cause I just said I needed five K right. The gross profits pre-tax. So now we got to take some money out for taxes. So right. this is the other piece I want to bring up here. So one of the things that a lot of people don't think about when they're making this leap is the way the self-employment taxes are going to hit you um, right. versus like when you're used to being W-2. We had a lot of questions about what is the knowledge. So once you guys think about the knowledge is just a comprehensive video library for running better classes inside the affiliate. So how to run progression, coaching tips, coaching tips, cues, full class evals, everything you would want to know to run better classes inside of your affiliate. And the beauty is the vast majority of it is done in bite-sized chunks, think five to seven minutes every day. So you can watch that video walk out onto the floor and run killer classes. So check it out, check out the knowledge. And so what we wanna now do, I'll share my screen again, we'll take a look at a gym budget. Yeah, and this kind of gets into how your- How your structure entities, Yeah, how you're structured, how your entities are structured, because the difference can be double or triple, depending on how you're structured. So in this case, let's uh, take a look at kind of the numbers here, see what we're looking at. So. Um, in this particular case of the gym, I've got $175 for the credit card payment, mm -hmm. 450 for the retail, um, my operating expenses. Let me take all these out and we'll come into here. Okay. So my operating expenses for this gym, let me change this affiliate fee. Cause that is, we're going to assume that I've been saving my affiliate fee every single month. So I'm not like behind on that. Okay. And um, let me drop this down. And the rest of those are fine. So we're going to say our operating expenses for this gym are just under 12K. It's 11, 8, okay. 5. And so that means that if I was wanting to take home personally, Five thousand dollars a month, right? So that means let's pop in right here. Gym numbers. Mm -hmm. So again, if you're listening, hopefully I'll, I'll say this enough. But if you oh, maybe you're watching as well, so gym numbers, right? We've got OpEx as eleven thousand eight hundred dollars a month. I personally want five thousand dollars a month. Now. There's a couple ways to do taxes. And I'll be honest, I I shift, I do shift up the way that I pull taxes in terms of saving for taxes, mm -hmm. depending on um, 
how much fluff the gym has in it and how much, you know, uh, how conservative I want to be. If we want right. to be a little bit conservative and be careful, an easy back of the napkin way to look at this um, would be to take how much you personally want and then divide that number by one minus whatever tax rate you want to use. So let me type that out so everybody sees it, right? So money pre-tax mm -hmm. is going to be equal to 5K divided by one minus 25%. 25%, yeah. And so that's going to be equal to 5,000 divided by 0.75, 6,000. $667 a month. And so now if I come over here to my gym budget, not that one, this one, um, my owner's comp, let's just say that this person is not S Corp. They're just like mm -hmm. single member LLC. Right. And right now they're just, everything's coming to them. That means that in order to make this work, I need to be setting aside $1,667 a month for taxes and paying myself $5,000 a month. Okay. And if I've done that, I'm going to click all of this now, retail plus tax savings plus OPEX plus owners. That means my gem needs to be pulling in 19 grand a month. Got it. And so the next obvious question is like, does the gym pull in 19 grand right, a month? Exactly. <laughs> Like at this point, it's really, it's really easy to say, right? It's yeah. really easy to say. It's funny that you bring that up. It's just like, cause I get lots of questions on this. They're like, Hey, well, uh, I want to, I want to hire this coach or I want to do this. I'm like, what's the budget say? Yeah. Right. They're like, what should I do? And I'm like, well, you should tell me what the budget says is what you should mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's one of those things where I think they forget they're using that tool and that tool has all of the answers sometimes, but it's, it just goes back to the math and it's, um, and this whole this whole thing, I was reviewing some homework uh, a little bit or earlier this afternoon, right before this. And one of them is the the business priorities uh, worksheet that we make people work through. And it's just like, hey, how much money do you want to make? And they're like, and and a lot of people will just put something very generic, like, I want to make enough money to pay myself. Yeah. And that just what you just outlined is the reason that fundamentally doesn't work, mm -hmm. meaning. And I tell everybody, I'm like, I want a number. And the reason you want a number in there, and they're like, and everybody's fear is that, well, I don't want to put too big of a number in there. And I'm like, well, I'm not telling you what number to put in there, but you got to put a number in there, right? But put put one in there because if I put a number in there that I want to pay myself X, well, then everything else we can work backwards into, which is like, okay, well, if I want to make X, the gym needs to make Y, mm -hmm. at which point now I can start to say, well, we are now here now i start managing my lead flow or start driving my sales funnels and in, in order to get to that target but now everything is objective right it's not just like this arbitrary like totally i want to be happy right it's just like well what's the number yep you know yeah what's really fun right about this is let's say that we take this nineteen thousand dollar example and and if you're listening don't get too hung up on like well my gym makes nineteen thousand dollars and i can't pay myself 5k a month it's like look there's a lot not not every gym in every city who makes nineteen thousand dollars a month is going to have five thousand dollars available to pay themselves. Right? No, many won't. Margin, many won't. Margins yeah. change, right? And so don't get too hung up in the numbers themselves. In the example, I want you to get understand the process. But like the next logical question then goes, all right, well, if the gym needs nineteen grand a month, and my average value is one fifty, cool. The gym needs one hundred and twenty seven members, right? Right. Now, and if I know how many members I'm growing by every month, I can start to predict like when I might be able to make that leap. Yeah, we're like 103. The past four months, you've netted five. You're like, okay, well, within reason, within four months, we can make this happen. Totally. How would you give advice to somebody who is asking this question, um, knowing that the long-term goal is... Maybe they want to only be coaching, you know, 10 to 15% a week. Mm -hmm. um, and they want to be really stepping into that owner mentality and, and mm -hmm. running their box with that, with that in mind. Um, but would you ever give somebody advice to say like, Hey, um, it's okay to like make the leap, even if it means you're coaching more for a time to be able to pay yourself that, or like, what would you, or would you say, no, hold off 
so that you can maintain, you know, Ooh, that's a good one. So some of this would depend on the person, obviously. Um, I will tell you my answer and then I'll tell you the reasoning behind the answer. So if they were trying to leave there and then go in there, I would very likely tell them, even if you're going to be coaching more classes, you need to go in there and do it. And and essentially, because what I'm twofold, one, it's I'm forcing the behavior of you must pay yourself first and foremost. I also think I understand people are like, Hey, you should have people do this. You should be able to delegate. I also know that practically speaking, a lot of times that's not going to be the case. Anyway, you're going to end up doing it either way. So you might as well go in there, get your hands dirty, figure out how things work, figure out what's going to break. And then you can start handing some things off because the reality is like, unless you're there full time, and you're doing all the things, you don't really know how it works. And I know there are some fucking internet gurus out here be like, that's not how you build a business. And I'm like, I just fundamentally disagree. I, you know, like we're not building a, a fortune 500 company here that is a ton of money. I'm like, you're going to have to go in there. You're going to have to get your hands dirty. You're going to have to do the thing. And then you're going to have to train somebody else to do it. At which point, I mean, you're going to have to do a lot for a little bit. And even more importantly, I think you have to, um, how would I describe this? You need to know how all of those things work. And then you, and then you need to get real tight on your budget. And when, and when it all needs to come to you so that you can make it work, you tend to make a real tight budget, right? When push comes to shove and you're like, Hey, I don't have any extra spending in there you know, then, then you tend to tighten things up. Um, so in a lot of instances, I would say, go in there, you do it for now, and then you can hand it off because now you also fundamentally know what it costs to run the business. And then you can work your way out of that. Right. So let's just say you go in there and coach all the classes. You pay yourself for all of those classes. Now what I know, now I know it exactly what it costs me to pay for all these classes. And then as I remove myself from the classes, in a perfect world, I wouldn't reduce my pay. I would keep, I would collect the same amount of money, but somebody else would start coaching those classes as the business grows. So that, that is what I would probably tell somebody in that in scenario. And that's why I would tell them to do oh, that okay. because there you, uh, gym owners are notorious for this. And it came up many times with the mastermind there, there will all, if you, if you're like, Oh, I'll just wait, there will always be another thing that will make you wait totally just forever until the end of time. So don't wait. Just do it, force the action, and then now now you're in it. Now you're playing the game, at, at which point you you look at things very differently now. I also like that. Um, I like that from the standpoint of the, the other thing that I would say, this is a little bit more advanced, and so you need to understand your budget really well to do this. But I also, let's use our $5,000 a month example. Mm-hmm. So you want to make five grand a month from the gym. Let's pretend that um what, what do you think is a reasonable hourly rate um for, for coaching? Is this a part time or is this part time? Uh I mean reasonable for somebody who's pretty good, 25, 30 bucks an hour. Okay, cool. So uh let's say it's let's say it's 25. And and so let's say that you are coaching like you're gonna quit your job. And so now you're gonna have a bunch of time on your hands. Mm-hmm. And so now you're going to, you're going to come into the gym and you're going to start coaching three classes a day. And so now you're coaching 15 classes a week at $25 an hour is what you would have to pay somebody else to do. Mm -hmm. Well, that's $4,500 a month right there. Mm -hmm. And so let's say that we're now paying you five grand a month, but from a budgeting standpoint, I would I would literally probably split those out and like pay myself for the coaching and then pay myself as an owner just so that I'm seeing that a little bit more so that right. as I grow, I can understand like, okay, the goal would be that I'm, I'm continuing to budget for the coaching. I'm just right. giving that to somebody else and then yeah. I'm more profitable and I can pay myself. Like the reason that you're not the way that you're able to quit the job in this case is not because you're just so profitable. It's because you, the owner are working as a coach. 
Correct. Which is which is not totally. a weird transition, no, by the way. Super and I, I, I literally had this exact conversation at the mastermind with somebody. You know, I was like, "Hey, what do you need to make in order to leave the job?" Yeah. And they were like, "100k." I was like, "Okay." And I was like, "So we pulled all the numbers out, look at their payroll, and I said, that's 100k mm -hmm. right there. You are currently paying $100,000 in payroll to other people. Now, I'm not saying that you should leave and go in there and do all of the work." Because that's a discussion about what's your time, what's your bandwidth, like, totally. like, uh, you know, am I going to split this between myself and my spouse and all these other things? I'm simply saying that like the money's there, which is always like the first thing going back to like, can we do it? And I'm like, you can. This now becomes a bit of a payroll reallocation exercise. What like, are the am I just going to take it all? Make? Yeah. Am I going to am I going to give it all to me? Can I can I sustain that? What does that look like? All those other things. But fundamentally, the math works. Now we have to factor in the other things, right? Like, okay, how do we do this? Is this a is this a viable option, um, or do I need to, you know, do we need to increase revenue by two thousand more dollars to have some part timers in there to get us relief in these very strategic places so that we can actually live our lives for the time being? Versus, well, if I'm going to leave my job and have everybody now, the increase in revenue needs to be an additional eight thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, you know, so. Yeah, I think one, so here's one other nuance I want to point out um, is this past weekend, I talked to various people who were kind of considering this mm -hmm. and varying levels of, I'm going to call it like if you ranked, if you could, if you could measure like mm -hmm. how much hatred you have for your day job. <laughs> there are varying I'm levels, right? I'm following, yeah. <laughs> varying levels. And so it's like I talked to one guy and uh and he was like, I actually really like my day job. Like, I'm not looking to leave. And so I think I'm just gonna keep hiring more part-timers and just like really be the owner at the gym. And then like maybe eventually I'll leave. And I'm like, right. great, you know, killer. Um, whereas like I can just tell you for me, like I felt like I was suffocating at my right. day job. I hated it. And so I was like, I will do, I will do anything. And anything. so I'm aggressively cutting my personal expenses while going like, how can I hire as few people as possible for my business mm -hmm. so that I can just make the leap and just do, you know? Yeah. And so it's like, I think that when you're thinking about, am I ready to quit? Am I not? I think making sure that you understand what you're going to do with all of that time and how you're going to allocate it. Um, and to a certain extent, it's going to look different for different gym owners, depending on yeah how much you hate your current situation. Yeah. Like, yeah. Quite frankly. Well, yeah. And, uh, and that's why I said it kind of depends. I would want to know more about the scenario because there's yeah. some people that, you know, they, they want to leave their job, but these are not people in some instances that are super passionate about coaching they just love the gym yeah yeah well that's going to be a problem because you're going to be coaching five classes a day for for some time period and if that's not your bag then you should not quit your job and go in there we need to figure out what are, what are the alternative scenarios here that allow you to do this over time and how long would that take but again to your point some people are like i will do anything other than my current job and i'm like dude then the number is probably lower than you think it is, it is. like you probably you probably take a significant pay cut to go in there and do something that you love not that that's what i'm suggesting that we want to achieve but in the short term if that gets you to your end state sooner mm -hmm. then many people would be willing to take that hit and be like i don't i don't i won't do anything right yeah. i'll eat ramen noodles ramen noodles and coach all the classes just to quit my day job and i'm like okay well let's go you know yeah um, but if but the other thing is, uh, are you are you single? Yeah, right? Do you have a family to support? Like all these things start to factor in, which is like, hey, let's not just be flippant about quitting your job. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I can think of a couple of gym owners who like financially absolutely could quit quit their job, and they're like, they're like, I want to, and I'm like, I don't think you should. <laughs> like from a from a from a from a from a long term standpoint, I'm like, yo, I'm like you have crazy benefits at this job, like yeah. crazy benefits at this job. You're relatively close to the point where you could retire with some yeah. sort of retirement package. And I'm yeah. like, can you just hang don't, on? Yeah, just don't just don't do that. Like just collect, yeah. you know, collect additional income off of this put yourself in a better position and then you can quit your job after you do all of that but it's some you have to do factor in those things where 
you know, could you, there are scenarios where you quit and you put yourself in, under more duress mm -hmm. than just being annoyed with your job. Like you might hate your job, but it does pay you every two weeks. So yeah, consider that something to be said for that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. I think that hit, let me go back and check my notes. I think that hit most everything I wanted to say. Um, so is there anything else that you had? And I can kind of summarize the numbers themselves. No, I think it's just um, th this question comes up a lot. They're like, hey, I, I'm doing this. I, I think it's time. They see the gym growing uh, or some significant changes are being made. Um, how do we how do I make the leap? And, and again, it goes back to very simply like you, you need both budgets. You need to know what you need to live and you need to know what the gym needs to live. And then most things after that become very contextual with regard to. 100%. What what job are you leaving? What benefits does that come with? What does your family life look like? What are you forfeiting there? Um, again, what is your hatred for your current job? Totally. And are you willing, what are you willing to sacrifice in order to do that? Um, and if you weigh all of those things out, it typically becomes a pretty easy decision to make both yes and no. Yep. It's like, hey, not now. Or yes, absolutely. Go ahead and do that. Um, and then, you know, almost always what we see is when when if once that person is able to make the leap and insert themselves back into the business you'll see an additional uptick in the business at which point they can start that stress that they're going to be under kind of doing all the things doesn't typically last that long yeah uh, in a lot of those scenarios sometimes it does i'm, I'm not going to bullshit anybody like sometimes you just got to hug the cactus but in a lot of instances you will see an immediate uptick because the owner is there you know, there, there's something to be said for burning the ships, right? You go in there and you got to make it happen. It's like, okay, well, you know what happens when that's the scenario? Most people get shit done. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I like one, one thing, one thing I want to point out too, with what you said here, right? Is like, I want to be, I'm always a little bit careful. Like sometimes people will come to me and they'll be like, I think I'm ready to quit. And, and, and when this happens, normally it's because like they really hate what they're currently doing and they're like. Um, I heard uh, on a podcast one time, it's a Silicon Valley guy, and he talked about um, building the airplane as like jump off the cliff and then build right. assemble the airplane build as you're falling or whatever. Yep. Yeah, and build like, it, building is, the airplane while you fly it. Yeah, that is really stressful. Um, <laughs> and yeah. and so that is certainly a way that you could do that, right? Like, let's say we build out the budget and we're like, my personal life needs seven thousand dollars a month, and the gym can pay me five but i don't have a spouse or anything and like i'm just gonna go into the hole every you know month for two thousand dollars a month but i'm just convinced that with my full focus on the gym i'm gonna make that up very quickly that could work i'm not gonna sit here and say it doesn't but like that i is, know for a fact it has worked it's well, just very like, risky right? it's just risky it's just risky and so it's like you know you want to be very thoughtful before you do that which again is like most people I know who do that kind of thing don't know their numbers. They just do it, right? And so it's like yeah. I'm asking you to like get the numbers so that you can make this a conscious decision. That being said, what I have found is that if you're willing to cut lifestyle things to get your personal need number down, like, you know what? We're going to cut any vacations this year. Mm -hmm. We're going to cut this, cut that. And like you're willing to say for this next year, we're going to commit to a lower lifestyle so that I can make the leap sooner. I totally agree. Like at that point, it's really nice because then as you have or are, are able to put that full-time focus on the gym, you will likely see that uptick. But the uptick now just goes back into like reinvesting into the gym and then being able to get more comfortable in your lifestyle rather than like, oh good, I can actually pay my rent this month. It's like, no, no, no. We, we, yeah. we, you know, let's not go that full-fledged. And so again, I'm going to sound like a broken horse on this podcast, but like, I feel like that's what I do every time you have me on is I just come on and go like, you just should, should know your numbers. It's really important. <laughs> like, well, like I that's mean, what hopefully people are listening because that is the crux of all of this. Um, but something you brought up in there, you, you said it and I don't want to skip over this because this comes up and people are people are like, I'm investing back into the gym. I, I will, This is a very important shift that I think gym owners need to make. Most gym owners are looking at investing into the gym as improving the bathrooms as buying assault bikes as whatever these these physical things mm -hmm. that they're going to be buying which by their very nature 
are depreciating assets, right? They are they are not appreciating in value. They are worth no more after you buy them. They are almost always worth less. Um, and really rethinking about like, hey, that money is best utilized by investing it in people and yes. looking at people as an investment to include yourself as a gym owner. Paying yourself is an investment in your future self. Paying your staff is an investment in your future staff, at which point that will in turn come back to you and you will be able to buy all of the other nice things. But I think when you make that leap, everybody is just like, well, if I, if I continue to just dump money back into the gym, somehow that will come back to me. And it is almost never the case. Yeah. You know, you need to take care of yourself. It is very hard. And very few people can can play it off to be the haggard gym owner and then go sell member gym memberships. Like you, you need to be prepared to help people. And if you're tired and worn out and stressed, um, make no mistake, that is going to impact your ability to sell a membership. It's going to actually impact your ability to run a good class or deal with a grumpy client. So what we're highlighting here is, is like all of this is intended to give you at a bare minimum, what you need to be in a position to run the gym effectively. We're not even talking about thriving in this scenario. We're just talking about like not going crazy. Yeah. So. Yep. Well, and the other thing that I think this other thing just come to mind too is like, I think it's hard for people to put a price on when you're thinking about making this leap, putting a price on the quality of life increase that can happen. And so like for me, I know when I quit my job, um, my my corporate job, um, we took a lifestyle cut mm -hmm. um, in order to do that. And so we took, you know, we bought less things. We 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 lived in a, a a much you know less nice place. We moved all these things, but my job had me traveling constantly to places mm -hmm. I did not care to go to away from my family in ways that I did not care on timelines that I did not want to be doing. And so for me, I was, I was looking at it going, yeah, our, our quality of life in terms of the stuff we can buy is decreasing, but our quality of life in terms of the freedom and flexibility I now have, because I work for myself and I work from home and like, I don't have to travel all the time in this old job. Like, I'll make that trade every day. Mm -hmm. And so when you're thinking about making this leap and you're thinking about running your numbers, I will say, obviously, the more money you currently need to live your personal life, right? The more money you currently make, the harder it is to make this leap. Because oftentimes, like just by definition, the gym has to be in a much bigger place for you to make that leap, right? Or your current lifestyle is too outsized for exactly the gym for the gym it. even though you'd be you'd be willing to do less but you're not in a position where you can we're just like well that's the mortgage payment like that's exactly the car. like those exactly. are all those are fixed right like i can't do yeah. anything about those. yep and so it's like make no mistake about it that the the less you need personally the quicker you can make this leap and so you should be trying to think about if you're, if you're listening and you're like, man, I really like, I really want to quit and like really just be full time on the gym. You should think about the quality of life increase that that would give you. And what, what is that worth to you? And mm -hmm. are you willing to make some trade-offs in other areas personally for the quality of life in your enjoyment of your work, the time and freedom and flexibility that you now have and all that kind of stuff yeah. um, compared to doing the day job and the gym and everything else. So yeah. um, trying to put a price on that, I think is helpful. On that note, that, be careful with that. I agree Obviously. with you 100%. <laughs> be careful with that. Like I, I agree with you 100% because they're, they're, everybody has a point where they're just like, I would take less money to not yes. deal with this nonsense, right? That's yeah. a real thing. I also don't want people to go into this with rose color lenses and be like, listen, as long as I have the gym, I'll be happy and poor. <laughs> no. And <laughs> don't do no, that either. No, no yes. I can assure you, you will not be happy. I don't care how much you love training. If you are broke, tired, and miserable, uh, you can train all the people in the world and you will not be happy. That's just not going to be the way. It's Agreed. Can't be, uh, be able to roll out there. So, I think establishing what those trade-offs would be like yes. very definitively. We okay, okay, no more eating out uh, through and during the week. We're going to cut out those two vacations that we went on, and because we're going to buckle down, we're going to make this happen. 
not saying like, hey, we're we're gonna give up meat and vegetables, right? We're gonna eat straight raw. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're suggesting. It's just going through that exercise. Like, hey, what am I willing to give up? How unhappy am I over here? And what is that extra twenty five thousand dollars worth to me? Um, and do I care about that car or whatever it is that I'm doing? Do I need eighty five, you know, streaming video subscriptions? Um, that I don't ever watch, right? Like, so all of those things, and you start to look at it, and you're like, oh, well, I can I can cover a lot of ground here yeah. to yeah. to get what I want in the short term, and then build back out of it in the long term. So, yeah. Um, if you guys are interested, um, obviously, this is what we do in Affiliate U. Nick is our budgeting coach. It's helped many many people make this transition. But if you are somebody that is on the fence, uh, reach out. We're happy to have a conversation with you. But at the end of the day. Uh, you know, the world would be a better place if we had more CrossFit affiliate owners and uh, this is the path to do it. So hit us up. Nick, as always, thank you, sir. And we'll see you guys next time. See ya. Thanks for checking out this episode of the Best Hour of Their Day podcast. We appreciate you listening and choosing to have us help you in your passion for coaching and affiliate ownership. You can find more episodes just like this on all podcast platforms. If you're interested in learning more, you can reach out to us on any social media platforms, or you can visit www.besthouroftheirday.com to book a call. If you found this episode helpful for you, please share it so that we can help other coaches and affiliate owners to help build a bigger and stronger CrossFit community. Thanks for listening.